Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and as you may know it, I'm wearing my brand new Blockbuster t-shirts that I got at Target a few weeks ago as a birthday gift. And yep, you can see exactly what Blockbuster looked like, and it has the line, Make it a Blockbuster night. <laughs> that was their slogan back in the 90s. Sure it takes me back to those days of video stores when we used to go out and rent a movie, a TV show, or even a video game, for that matter. <laughs> and sometimes we end up keeping it for like, goodness knows how long, like maybe we had to keep it for like a few days or so, maybe even another week, but that depends on the late fees that we get. <laughs> uh, I was actually thinking about doing a video talking about those video store memories I have which that also includes Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, and all these mom and pop video stores that we have. And I'm going to show you some examples that I got that also deals with Blockbuster here. Um, I got um, a VHS tape and a DVD of The Dark Half, <laughs> yeah, the George A. Romero film of Ryan Pictures. And this is an example of how this actually came from a blockbuster. So you can see the label right there. Um, and then you take it out. You can see this label here. It even has the warning sign. Yeah, this one says, To play is human, to rewind is divine. And it has blockbuster video logo and it says, Wow, what a difference. Yeah, that's the other slogan that they used uh, back in the 80s and 90s. There's another one, and it's for the movie Kicking and Screaming. Yes, and this was at Blockbuster. As you can tell, they just put in the, the cover art that they just, you know, scanned. And they just put it inside this case. But if you check the back, you can pretty much tell it has all the address and all. Yeah, it's from a, a location in Gardena. But you can see the, the label. And you can even see the price that says Preview $9.99. Yeah, even on the spine. <laughs> and you can see exactly what it looks like on this case. Even has the Blockbuster logo there. That's how you get it over there at Blockbuster. <laughs> now, to keep this in mind, I didn't really get this movie, nor The Dark Half, at Blockbuster. I actually got The Dark Half back in 2009 at a local used uh, bookstore, which was actually called Super Crown, but they changed the name to A&S. Oregon book and unfortunately that's been closed down it was located in Burbank and this of course I got a goodwill back in 2015 but it was nice to see that because now you can tell that they actually got it directly from Blockbuster and they, they sold it off and they just have it sold over there at goodwill so that way everyone could buy it for a lot cheaper <laughs> so that was the case um, course <laughs> as I showed you before this takes you back uh, a little bit. okay now I'm going to talk about the memories I had too now blockbuster video came out in 1985 the year I was born but we didn't go to blockbuster video we didn't even have one in my area which was in Glendale because uh, they had all these mom and pop video stores of their own. The, the one video store that they had that's close to the Blockbuster was Full Throttle Video. And this was a video store that was like located um, right next to that church, the Armenian church. Um, but it had like. Um, a mini mall that has all these places like they had a 
like a fast food restaurant or basically it's a sandwich restaurant called Submarine Cane. And then they had all these other places, like they had like a beauty salon, they had a liquor market and all these other businesses that you choose. It was, it was in the, the corner, you know, almost uh, across the street from where the Glendale Galleria is at. Yeah, so that's where it's located. It's, in fact, it was actually um, right, a, like maybe a few blocks from where um, Music Plus used to be. Uh, if everyone remembers Music Plus, this was yet another store that was later been bought by, or at this rate, part of it. Uh, it was later became Blockbuster Music um, by Blockbuster. <laughs> okay. Now, um, but before this, um, we used to rent movies all the time at that place. We only rent it for just like maybe a few days before we have to return it back so we don't get any these late fees. And usually we only keep it for like two days, perhaps. Maybe even free. Um, usually we rent like whatever movie that we choose. Like it could be like any new release that we haven't seen in theaters or, or we have seen them but we, but we want to see them again. <laughs> Uh, I always remember um, my family used to rent like so many titles like let's say we were watching movies like like we watched uh, Ghost yeah because that's a film that was uh, very popular in 1990 it came out in December but it went on home video in 1991 and we watched that movie and then um, I also recall we rented uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit um, which I, I know I've seen in the theaters uh, when I was a little kid. I was like three years old. And we, we later watched it again, but we rented it uh, along with many movies. And we always had a good time just sitting down while we ordered some sandwiches at Subway. Yeah, because there is a Subway around the corner, which was at Central. And we just sit around. I was I was a little kid, along with my brother Jason, uh, joining in with my father, my mom, and we would just sit around watching an awesome movie. <laughs> so those were the good times. But as years follow, you know, we we also started renting video games. Yeah, because we had the NES entertainment system that I have as a gift. Same goes with my butter. Because we used to play uh, Super Mario Butters a lot. And then, and so was Duck Hunt. And then we started getting some more games from them. And then later on we started renting them. Because we wanted to try out some other new games to follow. So we had all the best times we could. I know um, we also went to other mom and pop video stores. Like the Video Station. And that was uh, right across where Carl's Jr. is at. It was at Grandview and, and Glen Oaks. Uh, this was like a small video store, but we sometimes rent movies over there when we were moving at, a, at that old house. And I remember we started renting a lot of video games, and that's where we got some games that we ended up keeping. And that would have to be Hogan's Alley, you know. <laughs> Like Duck Hunt, I mean, this time you get to hunt uh, all these bad guys. And we had to use the, uh, the zapper gun from Nintendo and just keep shooting around. <laughs> Those fun times. And then we started playing all these other games, too, that we end up getting later on. Like we started playing Tetris, uh, uh, Q, I think that's what it's called. I mean, Quicks, I think, yeah, Quicks, which is like uh, Tetris, but it was like a Vortex type. I know we had other games like Iron Sword, which actually has a cover of Fabio dressed up as a, a warrior, like Conan. And, and there was like other games too. That fall. <laughs> but those were the times when, you know, when we want to rent like a game and we start playing them, we just want to keep on renting some more until we later keep it. <laughs> So that's what we had to do. 
Um, now, okay. Now, just that we know of here is now. Now I'm going to get to uh, Blockbuster. We actually found out that we had a Blockbuster that was somewhere in the Burbank location, and it's the one in all of Avenue. Because since we didn't have it in the Glendale location, uh, we end up going to the one in Burbank because we usually go to the Burbank location just so we can go see a movie over there, yeah, the AMC. And that's where we discovered that there's a blockbuster and we started renting some movies over there more often. Um, sometimes we actually rent movies at a local library that we have. Yeah, we have a public library where they have like tons of VHS um, titles to choose from and you have to use a library card to to pick them out but you only have to keep it for like a month I mean isn't that surprising sometimes we can even keep it for like maybe a few weeks that depends so that way you know you know my father can sometimes make copies <laughs> you know because he buys like a lot of blank tapes I, I started getting blank tapes too when I had a VCR, but that wasn't until you know the I was eight years old, you know, because I had a small TV as a birthday gift, and then later I got a VCR as a Christmas gift, and that's where when we have cable, I started taping some shows on VHS, but I also love to have copies of movies. I mean, because we couldn't afford buying any VHS tapes at, at the store because of how expensive they were. Yeah, that's exactly how they were. But they were going for lower prices, too. I mean, we had to end up buying all these Disney movies all the time, and then we also had to buy, like, like certain films, even the Star Wars trilogy and, and everything, so... Because they had it for a lower price, and, and it was the only one that's more affordable, too. Anyway, so, back to Blockbuster. When we discovered that there was a blockbuster in that location, that's when we started renting some, all these um, videos of movies and and even the, some TV shows too. Um, I was already into Charlie Brown by 1992. <laughs> Ever since um, I got those VHS tapes um, at my local thrifty in Glendale, yeah, which is now demolished. Um, that's, I mean, I started renting some more peanut specials, um, at the library, but then I wanted to discover some more, because I was getting into it, that we started renting them at Blockbuster, and one of the, the rentals that I, that I got from Blockbuster, that I wanted to have a copy of, was Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. And seeing that this was you know, summer vacation, and, yeah, I, I figured this was really cool, because, you know, this is before I had to go back to class in elementary school, and I, I've been wanting to watch this movie so many times that I just couldn't get enough of it, I, I just want to have a copy of this, you know, I want to have all of the Peanuts specials, and all these uh, movies uh, all together on one tape or even the next tape. And that's before I started collecting all these VHS tapes of, of the Charlie Brown specials that I'm trying to keep on going you know, as a kid. So I can keep on watching at any time. Never feel bored. But of course I would never feel bored because you know I have Nickelodeon <laughs> and, and all, but that's okay. No, but in case if, um, if there wasn't anything good on, then I would actually tune in and watch it. <laughs> you know, just, but I had to watch it on, at first I had to watch it on my father's VCR because I didn't have a VCR yet. But when I finally got one, I get to watch it anytime <laughs> for my TV. So, such great memories. Um, and I also started buying VHS tapes over there too. You know, I, I bought some Charlie Brown, the specials there, or, or even rented some of them, some more, and I also got some other 
VHS tapes of Nickelodeon shows, you know, like Rugrats. And I remember getting some gifts too over there, like sometimes you get all these um, snacks, like you get popcorn there, you get some drinks, you get other stuff that you need so that way you'd be ready for a movie that you just rented. And yeah, we used to do a lot of that. And like we always pick uh, whatever movie we want to choose. We do watch some family films there too. We watch some other types of movies. Um, like whatever film it is, like it could be like an R-rated film or a PG-14 movie or even a, <laughs> a PG-rated, um, any any kind. Like a, um, I started watching some other movies that I didn't get a chance to see in theaters. Like whatever title it is, I know I, I know I keep repeating myself. Um, yeah, like they could be like any new release that came out in the '90s that I wanted to check out. And sometimes, you know, I just I just can't get enough of it. I mean, that's why you know I became such a movie buff these days. Of course. Um, then, you know, going back and forth, you know, we end up in Oregon, and then we end up going back to California, too, over the years, when we learned that they had, like, a, a free uh, five-day rental, so, you, yes, you get to keep it for a couple days until the late fee starts to show. Um, but those days, of course, um, I remember... This was the beginning where we started to rent uh, DVDs, but we were renting VHS tapes, too. We didn't have a DVD player yet, um, but that's where I got to see movies like Rush Hour, and I got to see Ever After a Cinderella Story. Yes, we, I actually rented that uh, on home video. Now, what I didn't learn, however, was that, and I couldn't believe it myself, was that they actually released the PG-rated version instead of the PG-13 rated one. And yeah, I didn't realize that at first. So now I've real so over the years I feel like, you know, I must have got lied to. Like I, I thought they did release the PG-13 version on VHS, but it looks to me like they only released it on DVD. So that explains why they got the the running time wrong, saying that it's only 100 minutes, when in reality it should have been 121 minutes. Yeah, I'm telling the truth right there, too. So I, I did learn something now. <laughs> so I, I guess, I know, I know I've seen the movie, and I have seen it many times, but I just didn't know that there were some scenes cut. So, I mean, maybe, you know, my mind has changed over the years. So. But I also rented some Jackie Chan movies, you know, we started watching those because they were fun. And we started renting like other types of movies too, like, you know, sometimes we rent like movies we didn't get a chance to see, but we always have, so, or sometimes I like to see a movie again, and again, and again. I mean, those were great memories that we had, I mean, we always sit there, like whenever movie we want to watch, we watch it right away, and then sometimes we, we rent video games to to play like we, we sometimes rent uh, video games uh, even in our childhood days besides NES games uh, we rent you know Sega Genesis games and then later which my brother had of course and no matter what game we rent we we always uh, rent some and, and we also buy some games that he wanted and we all do you know like Sonic um, well, we also rented some Nintendo 64 games, um, such as Perfect Dark and GoldenEye. And we, we can't get enough of those games. I mean, those first-person shooter games. I mean, this was the first time I got to play a James Bond game that was really fun. I never got tired of it. I, I was hooked on it. And it happened um, when we first rented it at Blockbuster, but I didn't play it until we went to Oregon. So my brother was playing it. I, I, I guess at the time I was just, you know, bored. 
but I was just mostly watching some shows on Nickelodeon, you know, such as some Charlie Brown specials because they played over there, and then they did a, and I was watching all these other cable networks and stuff, even the preview channel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I had cable back. Um, but I did play the game later on. And I did later played it uh, when we were in Oregon, when we had to borrow the game from a friend next door. Um, we actually made friends with a neighbor next door, and, and um, it, it was um, a guy named Zeus. Um, I'm just going to say it right clearly. And he actually had the game on N64, and, and we started to borrow it most of the time so we could play it. And we were hooked on this game so much. I mean, I played it, my brother plays it, and we just... I think my sister started playing it too for a while. We all had fun. And so much that we were hoping that uh, by Christmas time we'll be able to get it as a gift, and we did. So that way we don't have to end up borrowing the game. But yes, I mean... It, we rented this at Blockbuster before we ended up borrowing it. <laughs> okay. And Perfect Dark was another one, too. We had to rent that. Um, I think we rented it at Hollywood Video. And, yes, and we were also getting into Hollywood Video, too, besides Blockbuster. Uh, Hollywood Video was another video store that was also in Oregon, too. And But we also had it here in California because they had a new location in Burbank, which was right next to uh, Ralph's and it was also next to uh, Baskin Robbins and Togo's and other places um, it, it was it was like Blockbuster but it had some more titles that you can choose from and they also have some snacks and stuff they even got posters yeah Blockbuster had posters too and, and all um, but surprisingly enough um, we started renting anime. Yes, we were renting a lot of this anime stuff too and that I didn't think we would be able to watch because my brother was into that anime club and he was getting into that stuff too and, and we were also watching some anime on Toonami and that's where I got to see Tenchi Muyo and all that stuff. And I remember my brother started renting some Tenchi Muyo movies because I didn't know there were movies because I know they didn't play it on the Toonami, but as I recall, they did play it on Sci-Fi Channel. Um, I'm not even so sure if I've seen it on there, but I know I, I saw it on home video. So that's interesting, too. Wow. <laughs> okay. But yeah, and then, and then since then, we started renting so many anime um, at Hollywood Video. I mean, and then we started getting a, a free DVD player at, um, well, which was actually, it was like a, a deal that we got at Radio Shack. Yeah, you know, we had our, a, we actually had our first DVD player, that's an RCA, so they say that if you get this DVD player, you get um, free MSN, you know the internet that we were getting. Because we had CopyServe. Um, that's our first internet that was sort of like American Online, but CopyServe was around um, long before that, I think. Um, so yeah, that's where we had our first computer. The, the compact computer back in 1999. That's where we discovered the internet, even though I didn't discover the internet until <laughs> I was in elementary school when I noticed that you know, they had a computer and they started having the internet and then I started going on the internet at the library and I started going to all these other places here that actually has the internet. And I even go to those computer classes where sometimes I play computer games or even have to practice typing but then most of the time I just surf the internet and start printing you know, <laughs> all these websites and all because I wanted to save them. <laughs> yeah. I was doing that um, e even when I was in you know, elementary and middle school, um, especially when I was in Oregon also. 
much. I was only there for a while. Oh boy. So yeah, uh, back to that. The, the DVD player, yes, that's where we started renting movies um, on DVD for the first time. And that's where I got to see uh, the movie Dogma. Uh, the, the Kevin Smith movie. And it was one of the first uh, DVDs we rented. And I watched it, and I love it. Had fun with it. And since then, we started renting more DVDs at Blockbuster, even though we were still renting VHS tapes. Um, but unfortunately, we, we didn't get any DVDs until later on, starting with X-Men, yeah, the, the 2000 film, by the way, which is now celebrating its 20, 20th anniversary this year. Yeah, the first X-Men movie we actually bought, but we got that as a Black Friday gift. <laughs> And then we started getting some more DVDs too. And I started getting my first DVD player, well, my own DVD player, because their first, uh, the first DVD player we had was actually for the family. So my uh, DVD player actually came as a combo pack with a VCR, because my first VCR died on me or it was having problems. Uh, actually, it didn't die on me per se, it was still working, but it just, you know, I didn't have a remote, I lost it, and and then I had to end up using all these buttons, and I had trouble with it, and it was even harder to actually, you know, play some of my VHS tapes, because I was afraid they were going to, you know, damage them. I thought this would be a better idea to get a new BCR to come with a DVD player so I can now watch some DVDs that we have. And then since then, I started buying more DVDs. And then we also started renting DVDs so I could watch it and all. And then, of course, that's where we got into the collection. Because <laughs> I started collecting DVDs as, as it follows. Even after I graduated high school. <laughs> and, and, of course, I was still buying VHS tapes and I was buying all this other stuff. And then I was going to Blockbuster or Hollywood video and started doing the same here. So those were those memories that I had. And I even started buying DVDs over there too and sometimes even rent them. And I, I had to continue to go on until I heard that you know both Hollywood and, and then later Blockbuster were going under too. I mean they were starting to rent Blu-rays at this point on too. Uh, after they were, you know, they were having all these um, DVDs to rent, and sometimes you know you get them to buy. Even those preview ones were, you know, I, I know which I had problems with too with those preview DVDs, as I just show you, was that they always end up having scratches on them and fingerprints, and I'm always afraid because I'm not so sure if they'll be able to work or play. Like they'll end up skipping. I had, I had those problems. But at times like this, I do keep them, so it's nice. So I buy like whatever films that are available for a lot cheaper. So it saves me money easily. So that's what I've been doing. And of course, this was around the era during the 2000s when Netflix came along and that's where people started renting movies online you know because they often do and I think that's what led to this competition that was happening and I know Blockbuster was getting into the action too they started to have their own uh, you know video uh, DVD rentals online and next thing you know well I guess you could say Netflix pretty much beat the competition. And that's where it started to get worse. But I guess with the new format that was going around too with Blu-rays, I mean, it's good to see that Blockbuster was going for something new. And they were, as I mentioned, they were and now uh, were selling and renting uh, Blu-rays as opposed to DVDs. And they stopped selling and renting VHS tapes. You know, they, they took it off. Nowadays, you end up finding them at, at local thrift stores or even Goodwill for that matter. 
Yeah, and that was the only place to deal with. So they getting, they were getting rid of him. Now, I have a friend, of course, uh, Brendan Mitchell, aka Web Movie One, and he actually worked at Blockbuster, and, and I remember he was showing some videos of of all the memories that he had too. Now, little did I didn't know was that when he actually worked at Blockbuster, I found out that there was actually a machine that erases, and I couldn't believe this, erases DVDs that they actually had all stacked up in stores. Like, especially the ones that were previewed. You know, like, because basically they should have just, if they weren't, if they wanted to get rid of them, they could just sell it off. You know, they could just sell it to some other blockbuster or whatever, or maybe, or just put it in a stack filled with all these preview uh, DVDs, just use it as a preview. I mean, that's how they sell them, so they can get rid of them. But I guess most of the time, they just want to throw them away, you know, dump them in the garbage. Or, worse comes to worse, erases them because the studio told them to do that. I'm like, Boy, that's, this is really disgusting. I mean, th this, this is really dumb. They, sh they should never do that. And I don't blame Brennan for actually hating that. I mean, now I can see why Blockbuster was going through a lot of problems. And if that was the, the case, I mean, yes, I mean, they were going through a lot of problems with the late fees going around. And I know they're trying to find a way to actually f push that. I mean, because people still want to be able to, to keep their movies for a little while before they have to end up returning it. So they'd be ready to rent some more. That, that was always the case, and I know we did that too. And boy, that was so hard. <laughs> um, but either way, I really miss those days. and. Despite of the problems that they were having, I mean, it was always nice to go there just to to rent or buy a movie to watch and always have fun. I mean, whatever it's a good movie or a bad movie, it's, it's always cool. Same goes with Hollywood Video and, and all these mom and pop video stores that we got. And it's sad that by the time the 2010s arrived, I mean, we lost Hollywood Video. They closed that down. Most of these mom and pop video stores that we had, even during the 2000s, they all turned into uh, cell phone stores, you know, like Verizon and AT&T that they were selling. That sucks. And then, now we're losing all the blockbusters that we have in our locations, and I wanted to keep on going before it's too late, and I just never had a chance. And it sucks so bad, because even with these going out of business sales, I had to end up picking up some other titles that I had, especially like the the Burbank location in Olive Avenue that we usually go to, and I only picked up a few titles, um, all of which were Blu-rays, um, and that was the last time I ever got something from them. Yeah. I mean, the Blu-rays that I actually got were films like Juno, Be Kind, We Wine. Yeah, ironically, I know, because that is a movie about, you know, trying to save their video store from going under or being torn down or so. And then Sunshine Cleaning, Monitors. So I lost my blockbuster in that area. And I even had a blockbuster... Um, at the Pacific area too, that's another thing I forgot to mention, was um, the Blockbuster, I was really surprised that we finally got a Blockbuster in that area too, and we also got another Blockbuster, we had two more Blockbusters actually, um, they, they had one that was um, right next to um, Little Caesars. And uh, that's now a paint store, but yeah, that was the first time we got a blockbuster there too, in, in that particular Glendo area in Colorado. We also have a blockbuster that was actually used to be a warehouse. Uh, yeah, if you remember the warehouse, um, that was a store where they always have a lot of uh, movies, music, and um, 
lot of posters and all, yeah. Basically FYE if you think about that. Yeah. I miss those stores. Um, but yeah, we actually had Blockbuster and free locations in our area because they already closed down all the mom and pop uh, video stores that we got uh, back in the 90s. So that's probably where we started renting some movies there too. But we mostly rented at the Burbank location. Okay. <laughs> I, I know I'm going over the place, but I, I just wanted to talk more. Um, but I, I really miss it so much. I really do. And I know Blockbuster once tried to have like a, a video rental service like Redbox. They, they were doing that too. Uh, but they had it at the 99 cent store. I remember we ended up renting just a few titles there. And then we had to get it back. It, it was, of course, those um, DVD uh, and Blu ray Coask machines. Coask machines that they use. They, they, they had those for a while. It was called Blockbuster Express. Um, but since then, that but then when Blockbuster ended, they stopped selling them anymore. Got replaced by Redbox, <laughs> and I know Redbox is now continuing to do more DVD and Blu-ray rentals. I think they're also going to do 4K Ultra HDs too, and I think that's what they're doing already. So that's the only place we get to rent movies now, and also the library, you know. We still have a library where you get to rent movies over there. But now, since we're living in quarantine times, because of this coronavirus, well, I guess the only way we have to be safe here is that we can't even go to the library, but we, I guess we just have to, well, have to deal with digital, which I know digital's been going around, you know, during the 2010s. You know, with digital copies floating around. I mean, we had to deal with ultraviolet. And we have Voodoo for our digital libraries and all this stuff. And, I mean, you do get to rent movies from there, and you can even rent movies, you know, through Amazon, Fire Stick TV, Roku, and other apps. I mean, it's too much. But. Since we're now living for those t tough times, all I can say is that I'll never forget the memories I have with Blockbuster, yet alone other video stores. And without them, I would never be a movie buff. I would never get into cinema or any of this other stuff, or any of my favorites like like the Peanuts game right there. You know, I would have never had collected Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and all the rest. I mean, I'd probably be living in boring times, actually. And I hope hopefully that doesn't happen. But that's the case, you know. We had to live for these memories. So, yeah. But of course, I mean, that was always the case of watching movies because also it wasn't just video stores in general, too. It's also because I started watching movies on cable, and we had pay TV with Select TV, and that's where my, my father started taping movies that we couldn't afford at a local store. We just end up, you know, taping movies that will save money this way. <laughs> and we, that was also another reason, too, that I would never become a movie buff. <laughs> So again, without video stores, without any of the stuff that we had, you know, we, we will live in, in tough times and we'll end up being stuck and you know, watching movies, you know, like maybe going out to a movie theater or just or just stay home and end up watching movies on, on TV. And nowadays with digital streaming and copies and all that stuff that we got. I mean, I guess it's the only way we get to rent movies. Uh, 
it's just not going to be the same. Especially with all the selections you want to choose, and you're going to have a hard time finding some good selections. And without video stores, you know, I would never have my own collection of videos that I never thought I would have in my entire possession. I mean, VHS, DVDs, Blu-rays that I have all in these wonderful shelves right there. See, look at this. That's like a lot of movies right here. Blu-rays, DVDs, you name it. And look at this shelf right here too. I mean, wow. Can you believe I actually collected all this stuff? Even right here. That's like a lot. So, that's how I've been doing them for a very long time. And those boxes um, on the back right here, yep, that's exactly where I put some more movies in there. You don't see it, but, but you're probably going to guess that there might be in there. <laughs> but of course, I might end up putting some more peanut stuff in there too. Yeah, Snoopy, Charlie Brown, and all the rest. I just love movies, cinema, and all. Because it just brings the best set of me. And of course, I do order movies from Amazon, eBay, and <laughs> I also receive gift cards and all. And, you know, I have to pay for my own money and all. Sometimes even my parents can give me money too. But that's how I've been doing all my life. But I can't help it. That's why I love watching them. Plus, I would have discovered some of my favorites too. Think about that. And at that point on, I probably would have known some of my favorite celebrities that were in those films. And of course, I would end up meeting them <laughs> too. But that's always the case here and Blockbuster will always be remembered and by the way Blockbuster we only got one Blockbuster left and it's in Oregon and I'm glad to hear that it's still doing business it's just sad that it's the only location we got in this world but I guess we have to do whatever it takes to survive so that's my video store memories I have for Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, and even mom and pop video stores around. I mean, no matter what happens, I'm, I'm always going to remember them. However, some do exist, you know. It, but that just depends on which location has it. But in my location, I don't have a single video store that I can go to unless I have to end up going far away. But I can't right now because of this situation. So, just going to remind you of that. So, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later.